Hello, everybody. My name is Victoria Russell, and I am the chair of the Livery Committee. And it's my great privilege to interview our prospective sheriffs who are coming up for election at Common Hall on the 24th of June. We're filming today in the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, and we're very grateful to M. Davis, an alumna, for arranging all the filming and putting it all together. So I'm going to be interviewing the prospective sheriffs, Alderman Alison Gowman and Alderman Nick Lyons. And I'm going to start with Alison. Hello, Alison. Tell us a little bit about the role of Alderman and the City of London Corporation. Uh, what does an Alderman actually do? Well, thank you very much indeed, Vicky, for giving us this opportunity to be able to speak like this and to share a video with our thoughts and something about the City Corporation. So as you've said, what does the City Corporation do? How do the Aldermen fit in? The Corporation goes back to William the Conqueror, 1067, and now it's largely known as a local authority, but in fact, the City Corporation does so many other things as well. It runs the City Police Force, it manages open spaces, it manages 11,000 acres of open spaces, and it has very many other rules as a Port of London Health Authority, it runs three wholesale markets, we have lots of schools, both independent and 10 academies. And so we're very much involved in all aspects of London life, but concentrated on the city of London in respect of our local authority function. And the aldermen are elected members of that city of London corporation. And so we're part of that elected body that deal with things around the city in terms of, as I've said, the police, but also about waste and health and schools and education and transport and planning. But the aldermen have a, another role which is more encompassing and differs from the common council members who are also elected. The aldermen are here to represent the business city, the financial and the professional services city, and to work with the Lord Mayor, who is the ambassador for those services, and to work with the corporation and the chair of policy and resources in making sure that we are creating a global financial city which keeps at the forefront of competitiveness and innovation. Thank you. And you've been an alderman for some 19 years or so, and before that you were a member of Common Council. Uh, what made you want to stand for Common Council in the first place, and, and what made you then uh, want to become an alderman? I've been working in the city all of my professional life as a solicitor, and so I had a vote in the elections. And in 1991, a vacancy came in the ward of Dowgate, which is where I worked. Main feature of Dowgate is Cannon Street Station. And uh, I thought, well, now is the chance as a vacancy. I'll stand for Common Council because I was so passionate about the city. I felt I could contribute and I wanted to do that. And so I was elected as a Common Council member for Dowgate and served for 10 years. And then there was a vacancy with the Alderman. Now, my predecessor had been there 28 years and I thought if I didn't grab it then, uh, I'd miss the boat. And so I took on that role in 2002. And so in my role as sheriff, I will be um, celebrating 20 years as an alderman in the city of London. It's a fantastic achievement, isn't it? Well, thank you. And it's been very enjoyable, very mixed. As alderman, I, I gave you some flavour of all the various different things that we can get involved in. I haven't even mentioned all the ceremonial, the church services. And of course, I missed out a big chunk about the livery because the aldermen are very much an interface with the livery companies who play an important part in the corporation. They're one of the three bodies that are connected to the corporation, the Common Council, the aldermen and livery companies meeting in Common Hall. And you've been master of, of two livery companies, haven't you, so far? I've been master of the glovers in 2013 and the master of the plasterers in 2019. Both wonderful years. Yes, and you're involved with other companies as well. I'm a court member of the Chartered Surveyors. I'm a liveryman of, a, of the solicitors, where I am a solicitor. And I'm an honorary fueler and upholder. And Nick, you're a merchant tailor. Yes. And you belong to other companies as well, I believe. Is that right? Yes, so I am uh, a member of the Merchant Tailors Company. Uh, I was under Renter Warden last year, so I'm a court assistant there. I'm also on the court of uh, the Worshipful Company of Bakers. And then I am a freeman of the educators and also the insurers. So you could say that um, through those four livery companies, um, I should be able to uh, uh, feed you, clothe you, 
educate you and protect you. Um, but uh, I'm... Uh, you should be able to. Yes. I should be able to. <laughs> and you will be able, able to. Able. Hopefully, sure. hopefully. <laughs> And, and tell us why uh, why you became an alderman. You obviously had, a, like Alison, you've had a, a distinguished professional career and you became an alderman in 2017. That's correct, and, yes. And what led you into becoming an alderman? Well, I have worked in the city since 1982. Uh, I started as an investment banker and worked for three US investment banks for 22 years. Um, uh, and uh, I stopped doing that uh, when I was 45 years old in 2003, when I then started a plural career and sat on the boards of a number of financial service companies, which is what I've done since then. So having been uh, almost 40 years working in the city with financial services, particularly as a non-executive with insurance companies and asset management companies, um, I felt that I, I wanted to give back if I could. and uh, I was asked if I would be interested in um, becoming an alderman um, and, uh, uh, and potentially uh, one day, who knows, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, and I, I'm very keen to um, use the experience that I've had in banking, commercial banking, investment banking, general insurance, um, property and casualty insurance, uh, life insurance, health insurance. So encompassing many, many different parts of the city. And of course, when you sit on uh, boards and indeed as an investment banker doing mergers and acquisitions, which is what I specialized in, you end up working with all of the other professional, uh, related professional services. So the lawyers, the solicitors, uh, the consultants, the auditors, the accountants, the actuaries. So over a long period of time, you develop a very good sense of the ecosystem of the city. And you know, we need the city to thrive to help Britain build back better in a post-Brexit, post-pandemic world. And so I think there's a, a job to be done and a wonderful opportunity to do it. So when you, uh, when you stood for election as alderman in 2017, how, how was that? Did, did you have to go around doing the, the, the sort of proverbial knocking on doors and persuading people to vote for you? And, and yes, what was yeah. your strap line? Well, it was, it was interesting because, of course, you, you only really discover your own foibles when you put yourself up for election and people start asking you pertinent questions about why on earth they should vote for you, uh, which is, and your immediate reaction is, well, that's a very fair question. Um, I think we do go round, of course, and knock on doors. In my particular ward, which is Tower Ward over in the southeast corner, that's a very strong insurance ward. And I was chairing a company in that ward at the time, uh, Miller Insurance Services. Um, and so uh, a vacancy arose when, and very unfortunately, my predecessor as alderman, Sir Paul Judge, died. Um, and so it, it felt as if that was the right time for me to, to make a move. Do you enjoy being an alderman? I enjoy it very much indeed, because not only do you have ward duties, but you have uh, roles to play within the corporation. You're sitting on multiple committees. And then also the Court of Aldermen and everything that the Court of Aldermen does. And as Alison said, the aldermen are there to support the work of the Lord Mayor uh, and in terms of the, the business city. So there is a huge amount to do. And now you're a prospective sheriff. So, so tell us a bit about the role of, of sheriff. How, how do the sheriffs fit in and, 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 and how are they relevant in the, in the modern day? Well, I think that's, uh, uh, that's a very good question because actually the sheriffs are the, the, sort of the, the oldest role in the city. Um, the role of sheriff dates back to Anglo-Saxon times, to the seventh century. Uh, and now the sheriff, uh, f the sheriff function really revolves around several things. Primarily, it's looking after the judiciary. And you're the interface in that capacity between the corporation, which owns the Old Bailey and pays for the maintenance of the Old Bailey, and the judiciary. Uh, so that's a sort of primary function during your year as sheriff, which is to represent those judges and the rule of law and bearing in mind that the rule of law and the independent judiciary is the absolute underpin of, of our tra trading and finance infrastructure. So there's nothing more important than that for us as we think of ourselves as a global financial centre. That's why so many people have confidence in, in what happens in London. Exactly. But you're also become, you also become part of what's called a civic team. So you work very closely with the Lord Mayor. So you support the Lord Mayor's theme and as a consequence end up representing the Lord Mayor when he's 
or she is abroad, uh, as he or she will be for up to 100 days a year. And uh, I'm sure that, that an, uh, quite a few people are wondering why there are two aldermanic candidates for sheriff this summer. Yes, um, the, the, the requirement uh, to become Lord Mayor of London is that you are a sitting alderman and that you have served in the role of sheriff. So the, uh, you, we have 25 aldermen, as, as Alison said. Not all of them will become sheriff. Um, uh, probably about half will become sheriff. And most of the sheriffs will become Lord Mayor. But every now and then, somebody who is sheriff doesn't become Lord Mayor. So every now and then, we have two uh, aldermanic sheriffs. So Alison and I will, you know, once we've finished our Shreveville year, we will be eligible, uh, eligible to be considered as a, f a future Lord Mayor. So it's important always to try and have, in an ideal world, you know, four or five aldermen who have served as sheriff so that we can choose as a court of aldermen the right Lord Mayor for what the city needs at a particular point in time. Alison, what are your plans once you're sheriff? Now, I've been a commercial real estate lawyer all my life in the city, which has given me great exposure to what the city does so well, to the property market, and, but it also has exposed me to all the businesses that are working in the city and an understanding there. But I want to talk about and promote the role of property as a, a very important asset in our economy. And especially at this time that we're recovering from COVID and there are all sorts of concerns about how our property will bounce back. You know, this is the time that we should be talking about property and how we can use that to the best advantage for the city, because property is what the city is all about, frankly. I've also got um, a great interest in what I'm calling purposed finance, simply because it's a P as well. And that's about green finance. I was going to ask you about green finance. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Basically, it's about funding those things that are needed to transition all of our activities to meet climate change issues, to make us a resilient city, a resilient country. It means funding infrastructure projects so that we can actually make sure that we are minimising our global em uh, carbon emissions and actually transitioning from fossil fuel usage. So green finance will be used in our buildings, in our infrastructure. Nick, Alison, thank you both very, very much. I will look forward to Common Hall on the 24th of June. Uh, unfortunately, there won't be as many Liverman in attendance to, to vote due to the, the COVID restrictions, which will still be in place, but it will, will still be uh, an exciting day and uh, I wish you both the very best of luck and I encourage people to look at the Livery Committee website, liverycommittee.org, where there will be further information, where Nick and Alison's election addresses are posted and where there'll be further updates, not just in relation to Common Hall and the election of the sheriffs, but the livery generally. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thanks very much.